Welcome back to Business Class. Well, the booming bar culture in our capital city shows no signs of slowing down, with a batch of new venues joining the scene, but they're not tiny drinking holes in hidden laneways. These are, in fact, in some of our biggest and brightest hotels. Well, here to tell us more is food writer Nisia Wilden. And Nisia, um, I'm so interested in this, and obviously the bar culture certainly is, is sort of booming at the moment. I believe you've got a, a few great new bars to tell us about. Well, that's right, Leanne. It's interesting that it is now no longer just this inner city laneway thing. I think the big hotel bars have decided it's time for them to join the party as well. Uh, so first up in Sydney at the Four Seasons in George Street, we've got the new Mode Kitchen and Bar. Hmm, I think it was a name dreamt up by the accountants, but never mind, it all looks very lovely and glamorous. And indeed, the nine metre long bar is a big part of the drawer. Now, Mode looks very 1920s in style and it has a very cool cocktail list that draws heavily on the small bar trends. So you've got your housemaid syrups, your botanicals, your boutique gins, all, all that sort of thing. And Nisia, I believe Mode has been taken over or, or has taken over the space that used to be um, Pay Modern Restaurant. Correct me if I'm wrong in terms of uh, that pronunciation there. No, Pay Modern is right, Leanne, and in fact, coincidentally, exactly the same thing is happening at the old Pay Modern restaurant site in Melbourne. That too is about to become a bar, or more correctly, a bar and late night supper club called the Mayfair. Now, like Mode, Mayfair is channeling the jazz age, and in fact, I think they're planning to have live jazz there a couple of nights a week. Uh, so that's Mayfair, that's opening next week. Uh, at the Sofitel Forecourt on Collins, and I think they're licensed to 1 a.m., to 1 a.m. so that's something to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and another, oh, and another hotel bar as, as well, um, just last week, that um, had popped up in East Melbourne, I believe. That's right. I popped in to have a look at the brand new Clevedon Bar and Dining at the Pullman, and of course that's right across from the MCG, so just in time for the footy finals. Now, Leanne, I know you're too young to remember it, but viewers of a certain age might recall the Clevedon from its former incarnation. Back in the 80s and 90s, it was a fine dining hotspot for the rich and famous. Of course, it all looks very different now after a $6 million makeover and space for 400 guests. And of course, as you'd expect, the cocktail list is very on trend. Now, I thought that espresso martinis were the last word in cocktails, but clearly I'm, clearly I'm just out of date mm. because I note there's a cocktail on the Clevedon list. It's called the Sheep Way Espresso Martini. Ah, there you go. In a martini sheep way. That's intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go figure. Um, yeah, I think it's from. I think it's actually made by from Tasmanian sheep whey vodka. So there you go. Mm. Oh, and now, sorry, in breaking bar news, Frank Camora from Movida tells me he's mm -hmm. just taken over the space next to Movida, the mothership in Melbourne's Hosier Lane. Mm -hmm. He's also opening a bar, which will be a bar and a bottle shop and a food store all rolled into one. Now he's calling it Bar Teeny. Now, that's Bartini as in Martini, mm. uh, not a reference to size. It's going to have about 100 seats and that's going to be licensed until 3 a.m. Great for all you night owls out there. Yeah. Uh, so looking forward to that one. It's opening in November. All right. I love the name. Very clever there, Bartini. Um, whilst we're talking wine, um, I suppose this theme for our foodie show today, it's, it seems to be the drinking theme, um, the Margaret River um, holding their 50th anniversary. Yes, that's right. It's happy, happy anniversary, Margaret River. It's 50 years since Vas Felix planted the first vines in the region. And of course, since then, Margaret River has gone on to become world famous for premium Chardonnay and Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, as it happens, they couldn't really have chosen a better time to be celebrating because just last week, Leanne, we heard the news that wine has now beaten all other collectibles to take mm. out the top spot as the most valuable investment in the mm. world. So if you're thinking of buying a few bottles to lay down, of course, Cabernet is renowned for longevity, so now could be the time. Mm. Wow, better get my wine cellar going there in, uh, in that case there. Um, and Nisi, I believe you tried some of the other uh, current vintage wines at, uh, at a Margaret River anniversary dinner on Monday night. 
That's right, a dinner at Vieux de Monde on Monday night. We tried uh, 11 wines, actually, and look, they're all so lovely. Um, it was honestly hard to stop drinking. Um, but I would like to name a couple of faves. Uh, one was from Xanadu, a Chardonnay, the Stevens Road Chardonnay, current vintage. And the other was a red, of course, uh, Woodlands Cabernet Sauvignon, Matthew Cabernet Sauvignon, sorry, um, 2014. Beautiful, beautiful wines. Mm, all right, excellent. Well, speaking of events, and for those that may be in for a bit of a glass of wine tonight, I believe that there is an event happening in Sydney. Yes, that's right. It's not too late to join the fun. Uh, there is a dinner on tonight uh, with the Margaret River people at Bentley, the lovely Bentley restaurant in the CBD. Open to the public, uh, just book direct through the restaurant. And if you really want to get organised and uh, look ahead, uh, the big anniversary bash for Margaret River will be at the annual food and wine festival at the region in November. That's Margaret River Gourmet Escape. And I hear that they've bagged a biggie from the wine world as their star guest. Jancis Robinson, arguably the world's second most famous wine critic, is, is coming out to join the usual roll call of celebrity chefs. So All right, excellent. One to, uh, one to, yes. Certainly one to book ahead for. Yes. OK, um, but tonight, Bentley Restaurant in the, uh, the CBD there for those still interested. Finally, Nisia, um, you have a little bit more to tell us, uh, an interesting one sort of outside of Australia. You want to tell us about a waiter in Singapore with a difference? Yes, Leanne, absolutely. I have seen the future of hospitality and its name is Robot. Or rather, Kobe, the cute new robot waiter at Singapore's mm. Park Avenue Rochester Hotel. Now, R Kobe is actually a world first in driverless technology. He can not only do table service to the hotel's Cali Cafe, he can also do room service. And mm. unlike the driver's, driverless pizza delivery cars currently being trialled by Domino's in America, Kobe can actually find your front door. In fact, what he does, he takes the lift, he finds your room, he calls your number, and then when you open the door, all you have to do is press a button, a compartment slides open, and you take your plate of food. You even get a chance to rate Kobe's service. No word yet on whether he gives you any back chat if you don't like him. But it would appear that customer feedback has been overwhelmingly positive and Kobe's parents are delighted. In fact, they say that he's increasing productivity at the Park Avenue Hotel and more importantly, he's helping combat Singapore's acute labour shortage. So there you go, and don't be surprised if we see Kobe in Australia sometime soon. Yeah, I look forward to meeting him. We've got this innovation happening everywhere, even in the other uh, restaurant scene there as well. Uh, look, Nisia, we'll leave it there. It's been a pleasure having you on as always, and uh, we do appreciate talking to you. We'll talk to you soon. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Leanne.